Hello everyone, welcome or welcome back. I hope you're doing well. Today we are going to paint a lot and I will take you with me when I sell my art at a market for the first time, especially at the RAW flea market here in Berlin. So very exciting and I'm also going to tell you how it went. Um, quick disclaimer, you probably already hear it in my voice again and I know how frequently I'm saying this but I'm still fighting a bit of a cold again I know very annoying yeah so I'm sorry again I had the rough idea cooking in my mind for quite some time for this painting especially because the motive was quite intimidating to me um, also I find water pretty hard to paint but the last spark for this painting gave this quote from Velvet Mood, which is one of my favorite songs by Alice Fibilou. And it's been also a new thing for me to integrate something like those stars into one of my more classical portrait paintings, because I just started to um, paint more illustrative and graphic paintings in the last few months. But then the motives tend to be um, still lives or something like that. So it was very new to me to integrate one of those illustrative elements into one of my more classical portrait paintings. Also, I showed you which reference I used for this painting. And the thing with references is always a struggle if you can't do the entire painting from your imagination alone and if you can't just shoot a reference photo exactly how you would like it. So I had to get a little creative there and I remembered that I recently took the analog photo of my best friend Sarah, which you saw um, at the beginning of the painting session. And then I tried to take a photo of my own hand to match the perspective afterwards. Yeah, that means beware if I ever take a picture you might end up as a reference for a painting. But despite the fact that I had to use a reference especially for her face and her hands, I'm also super proud that I drew and painted her entire body with all its colors and shadings without reference. I know it's neither a super complicated pose nor a perfect painting, but I was very surprised that I have been able to do that since I always heavily relied on references. Turns out I can do more if I just let myself. So I have previously thought about selling my art at suitable markets, however I had always dismissed this as quite time consuming and expensive and postponed it to some time in the future. But when my friend Millie suggested that she would share a table with me at the RAW flea market, I let the thought marinate for the day and <laughs> I was already completely invested by the evening. Back then I was already planning how to make the booth most beautiful and efficient and really thought about how I can display my postcards and prints and stuff in the best possible way. And I went on eBay Kleinanzeigen that evening and found some cool stuff. And yeah, it took me like four hours to transport this postcard and print stand in the heat alone. I'm not gonna lie, I was so annoyed at myself back then when I picked them up because I really literally had to drive through half of Berlin, pick the two things up in two different locations and had to drive with them with S-Bahn, subway and the bus and had to walk with them. That was no fun. Yeah, I know not asking for help is on me, but back then I thought, how hard can it be? 
Uh, yeah, I hated every second of it, but I really wanted a cool booth for the flea market and I even got the postcard stand for free. So that was a win. So the flea market is tomorrow and I hope that I just finished packing everything. And here I have pretty much all of my shop inventory, which means prints, originals, the illustrated mugs, ceramics, necklaces. Also I have useful stuff I may need for fixing things, also stuff for packaging, because if someone wants to buy a print, for example, I can't give them a sheet of paper, so I have envelopes in there. Um, yeah, and I hope that's it, because I've never done this so far. I haven't been to this flea market myself, so I really don't know how things are going there. Yeah, but let's see. <laughs> So it was definitely a very fun day. A lot of people looked at my stuff or also said that they thought it was very cool or beautiful and some also took a business card. I didn't sell much though, I only sold postcards and after the final checkout I definitely walked out of there with 5 euros minus. Um, because I had to pay my half of the booth fees and 15 euros for the print stand I got from eBay Kleinanzeigen. I mean, I can use the postcard and the print stand forever now. That was a good investment, I would say, but yeah, it's fine. I've never been to that flea market myself before, and now I know that most people like to make a steal with especially clothing there. So, of course, you don't just buy a print for 15 euros or anything handmade that's more expensive. But with the effort and the material cost I put in my pieces, I can't give them away for very little. So, yeah, but it was still a cool day and maybe sometime I go to a market that is more for art and handmade if the booth fees are not too high. I'm not going to invest hundreds of euros just to pay for a booth if I don't know if I will be able to bring that money back in. Yeah, but doesn't matter. For now I definitely need a break from that. <laughs> If you've been here for quite some time, you know that creative blogs are an ongoing topic of mine and I know how annoying it is to always talk about it, but I'm sure that I would rather not have to talk about it. So yeah, <laughs> bear with me. So there is this book, The Artist's Way by Julia Cameron, and it's not new. But I've just recently seen this book, um, which is also a 12-week course against creative blog. I saw this book so often in the past few months that I finally gave in and was like, oh, fine, I'll read it. And I'm really trying my best to sustainably unblock myself creatively because this has been such a persistent struggle for such a long time, which is also extremely frustrating, especially if it concerns that one thing you love to do the most, which is painting for me. And right now I'm in week five, um, so I can't do a really good and well-rounded review of it. But so far I would really recommend it. The spiritual aspects are nothing for me, but as the author also explains at the beginning of the book, you don't need to believe in anything like this a higher power or whatever for the tools the book teaches to work. As she wrote, do not allow semantics to become one more blog for you. And to be honest, I'm glad I didn't realize she integrated spiritual aspects before I bought it, because otherwise I guess I wouldn't have decided to read it due to prejudices. And the main tools are um, the morning pages and the artist date which means that um, you do a weekly artist date with yourself to fill your quote-unquote creative well. And you can do anything, also silly stuff that has nothing to do with your initial creative practice. It doesn't even necessarily need to be something intellectually valuable or so if you don't feel like it. And at the moment I'm really trying to prioritize art making as best as I can and try to really stick to my artist day, the morning pages and all the other tasks that you are given if you commit to this course. On my last artist date, I strayed through my local creative shop and strangely found myself very inspired by 
some cheesy miniatures, which you just saw here. And I instantly decided that I want to turn them into silly fridge magnets. I really don't know why, but they bring me a lot of joy. I find them so cool and I think something has been set in motion that cannot be stopped so quickly. I see myself going back there and again for doing more magnets. Also, I found a small canvas in the exact size I wanted for my next painting. So who's talking now about synchronicity, Julia? If you know, you know. Before I sign off for today, I just wanted to share a few thoughts as I want to be as transparent as I can with that since my YouTube or Instagram can give a very different impression, I guess. So lately I've been trying to prioritize art making as best as I can, as I said, and even if it's just for an hour a day, it doesn't sound much, but it's not easy. Oftentimes I don't paint properly for weeks or months because I get lost in life stuff, and then have no capacity left to even come up with, say, a new motive idea. And not to mention the irrational high standards that sometimes make it too overwhelming to even start painting at all. And that only feeds the creative block further. A major role in creative blockages is often played by negative beliefs or unconscious negative beliefs. In that context, they can be, for example, I'm not creative in reality, my ideas are predictable, who the fuck am I to even call myself an artist? Bullshit like that. And it's so important to identify these because often, as I said, we are not even aware of them. And that's why it's important to prioritize your passions, even if it's just in small ways, so they can flow better again. Recently, the illustrator at Be Kind Bella described creativity this way. It ebbs and flows, sometimes it hides under rocks and you have your hands too full with other things to flip them around. And that resonated a lot with me. As I've said before, instead of getting lost in the thought of not being creative enough, we should focus on getting better access to our creativity again because everything we are looking for is already there. Okay. Rant over. I hope that wasn't too rambly, but I really want to encourage you to share your thoughts, experiences or tips around that topic. If you have any and want to share them, I would really love to hear them. And other than that, I think I'm going to sign off for today. Thank you so much if you are still here and chose to spend your time with me. I really appreciate that. Consider subscribing to the channel and of course, I hope to see you in my next one. I wish you a nice rest of your day and goodbye.